Can you hear anything? I can't hear anything. I can't hear what she said. Uh, I can't hear. I don't understand. Why are your feet in my shoes? Uh, uh, you know what? <laughs> Are they you know on um, just on Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So we can continue. Let's continue. I'm just going to start again. And what I started with, we're going to be looking at different types of charts today. So I will just... And we're going to be looking at this quarter one sales data. There are different types of charts we can use for presentation. We can use the pie chart, we can use the bar chart, we can use column chart, we can use area chart. So there are so many charts that we can use, and we're going to be looking at some today. So the first thing I do is I'll select my data, I'll go to the insert button. Insert. I'll drop down this to see my different types of charts. If we start with the clustered, the stacked column chart, or the clustered column chart, let's, let's do the clustered column. This is what the column chart looks like, and you can change. You can change the different colors. You can have different themes.
and you can change the different chart types. But it's all it would all be in this column chart type. We can also have the bar chart. So the first thing we do, we select, we insert, we click on this. We go to all charts and we take the bar chart. Let's pick this one. And that gives us a bar chart. So this is a bar chart. This is a column chart. We can have a pie chart. Go to all charts. Let's go to pie and pick the and then all you need to do is drag it to wherever you want it. And you have your pie chart here. Is that pro can you see my screen? Let me just check so you can see my screen. Oh. Can you see my screen? Okay. So what I'm trying to, I'm creating different charts. So this is the quarter one sale. This is the data I'm using to create this different chart. This is a column chart. This is a bar chart. And this is a pie chart. I'll create this one again for some who didn't see my screen. So what I do is select the data, go to insert, drop down this arrow and I can pick the chart I want and it's okay and I have the chart I want. I can change the color scheme of this chart or I can change the type, I can change the color using different color schemes, I can decide to make everything gray. I can do a green so you can change the color and you can change the style as well to different types. So you can actually play around with this chart. We have the pie chart, which is down below, and it and is the same way. Let's create another type of chart again. Let's see. Oh, chart. Let's look at the line one. Let's pick this one. This is another type of chart we can create. This is a line chart. We can create an area chart. Let's see. Let's see what an area chart looks like. All chart area this looks good. So this on the side is an area chart. I hope everyone can see my screen now.
this is an area chart okay okay we can also create another type of chart they're called like like a combination chart so we can have like a bar of a pie I'm going to use this data. I've extended the data a bit. So I'm going to use this data. And they're called combination. They're combination charts. So a pie of a pie. Let's look at it. So what it will actually do is it will group some into others. Let's put percentages. So it groups some into others, and then it brings it out by the side. So this is a pie of a pie chart. We can have another. We can have a bar of a pie, a combination of a bar chart and a pie chart. Let's do that. And it's insert. Drop down your chart. If you go to all charts, you can go to pie and take this option. And this is bar of pie. So we can do different things with with charts to enhance presentation and you know just to make it more visually appealing. There are other types of charts that we can, but we can't really touch all the charts now. So you can play around with the charts and you know just create different different things. After the chart, we're going to be going into different functions in Excel. That's creating formulas in Excel. Let's start with our text function. Okay, so text function, what text function does, it, it brings out different types, of, it allows you to, dif to use different formulas to bring out different elements of a text. For instance, if you look at this screen here, can you, I hope you can still see my screen. Look at this name. These are all in different cases. I'm just going to delete this. If you want to put this in low proper case, we have to make it equal to, we use the proper function. So what it does, it will change the text to proper case. So that will be proper, open a bracket, select the text, and close your bracket, and enter. And then it turns this to a proper case. Before I knew this formula, I used to take it to Word and, and convert it in Word, but you can actually do it in Excel. And if you drag that down, it converts everything to proper case. If you want it in lower case, so I said, let's change this to upper. You want this in lower case, it will be equal to Lower, you open your bracket, select your text, close your bracket, and enter. And you have it all in lower case. If you want it in upper case, it would be equal to upper, open your bracket, select the text, close the bracket, enter. And it converts everything to uppercase. 
There are other functions we can use to pull out the text. For instance, this is a combination. This is a combination of the first name and the last name. If I want to pull out only Alan here, I can use the left formula. So I can make it equal to left. What left does is it would it would count it would, it would look at the text you selected. It would count the number of characters you want to you want to take out, and then it will just transfer those characters to the next to the cell you are putting the formula. So for instance, I want just Alan here. So I would open my bracket, select this, I'll put a comma, and Alan is just four letters. So I want just the four 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 letters on your left. And it enters and it brings out just Alan. So that's the left formula. It also works for right as well. So I want the five letters on the right. So I would put my equal to sign, select, open my bracket. Now I would so I would equal to right. Open my bracket, select the text, comma. I want Jones this time around, so that is five characters, and close the bracket. I can do a need. If I want, I want letters in between, in the middle. So this time around. Okay, before I go to mid, let me just do the left again. Because if you don't know how to type it in, there are other ways to get this, so I will do this again. So for left, you can always go to your formula. I'll go to the text function. That is where you find things like this. So I'll go to left, and then it opens the dialog box for you which is easier to use than actually typing it in. You actually type it in when you already know how to form the formulas. So I'll put, it opens this function box for me. I have text here. So the text I want to use is F6. So I can click on it, or I can type in F6 here. It's always better to click on it. That leaves no room for error. And what I want is, I want four characters. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to look for here, and OK. And it does the same thing. But when you now get used to using this formula, you can just type it straight in. I'll do the same thing for right. So once you put your equal to sign, you can go to your formulas and go to test, and I'll look for right. And it brings up the box. I want um, this here, and I want five letters on the right. And then you can actually see what it's doing by the side here. So if you change that to like four letters, you, you see what it's going to come up with. So you can actually correct it here before you press OK. And then you have that. The mid function is when you want to pick letters in the middle. So for instance, let me change this to three names, for instance. Let's see. Let's make this Alan, Alan Mark, Mark Jones. So I want to pick just the middle name here. I can either use my, I can type it in or use my function box. Let's use the function box. That will be equal to, I'll go to text, mid, I'll select my text, and it will ask me where I want to start the middle from. So I'm going to count this and ask to start one, two, three, four. I want to start on character five, and I want four characters after that, or five, which is Mark. 
So I'm starting on number four, character five, and I want five characters in the middle. And when I press OK, I have mark. Or you can also type it in straight. So you can do equal to, if you do a meet, open your bracket, click on the test, comma, start from character five, which is five, and return five. I'll start from character six, actually six, and return four. And then I have mark. If you need to edit this formula, you can always click your function box to bring out the function box. Let's change this to 6 and let's change this to 4 and OK. And then you can amend your formula. So now we have, how long we have June, we've been able to bring out Mark. If on the other hand, we want to join this work together, there are different functions we can use. We can use a function called concatenate. So it would be equal to concatenate means join all these cells together. So I, can, I want to join all the three names together. So I'll click on the first one comma, click on the second one, comma, click on the third one and close my bracket. And it's joined all these three cells together. However, this doesn't really make any sense because I want spaces in between these names. So to do this, I'm better off using the AND fu function. So this is an AND function. Uh, which is this sign, which is that sign there. So I can do equal to, I want Alan, then I want Anne. I can put a space here, so I'll type the colon space, another colon, then and, I pick Joe, then put another space in between, and an and, and I'll pick Mark. I don't seem to like this. Yeah, I'm missing and enter. And there I have all the all the three joined together. If you choose to use concatenate, you're gonna to have to type the and in concatenate. This comma comma this. So that is me adding Jones and Alan and Jones together. You can also use the function box. Let's go to so we'll pick the concatenate function and we just Put what we need here. We need the space, the blank space in between, and then this, and it's okay. So you can arrive at this using different methods. If you need to check the length, just going to paste value this. If you want to check the length of your, let me delete all this, I don't, I don't know this, okay. I want to check the length of this word, for instance, so I want to know the number of characters that is in this cell. So what you do is equal to len, open your bracket. Select the text and close your bracket, and then it will return 15 characters. You can also use this function to do this, which is the learn, and it just asks you to select your test. 
and that is it. So there are quite a bit of functions on the on the test that you can use. You can do a search. Let's search for let's find um, let's find Mark. We want to look for Mark within this. And we want it to return the number of characters. So it's telling us that Mark starts from character six on this test. So there are a couple of functions we can use on the text. We have some information functions we can use as well. This is for training. Okay. Let's do bug shop. So I have another string, I have another data here which is the sales for different products. Now we're going to be looking at some other functions that will return information. Okay, let's do this. So we have some functions that can that can count cells, that can sum cells, that can average. If let's look at the first function of count if. So I have this data here. This is the the shop. The cells, great tires, and carries out service. So how many brake shoes have been how many brake shoes have been bought? We want to know the number of shoes, brakes, bought. So I want to count the cost for every item that is break. So I can use I will use the count function, the count if. So I'm saying count it if it's a break. So it would be equal to count if I open my bracket so it wants, it wants to know the range to count so this is what I'm looking at comma and I'm saying if it breaks yeah we can also use this function box, which is, it will ask you for the range and what you want to count. Break, breaks, breaks, not break. And you can only find two elements of breaks here, which is these two. If I want to count service, for instance, I can amend this formula. And just make it service, and you count exactly the number of times service appeared, which is twice as well. How many tires have been bought? I want to know how many tires have been bought, so I can use count if as well. I would say count if. So my range is my criteria is Mm 
Okay. So you can change it for anything you like. So if I if I want to count tires, all I need to do is change it to tires. And then I have tires. I want all items that cost one hundred pounds and above. So I would say equal to count if I would put my range here. I can open my function box and what the criteria I want is I want anything that costs above a hundred pounds. So it would be greater than one hundred which is an OK. So I have four items greater than 100 here, which is correct. I can use the combination of count if as well, which is count if. So I can say how many tires cost more than 70 pounds, for instance. I want to know how many tires cost more than 70 pounds. So I will start with count if. And what this gives you, it gives you ability to put different conditions on your count. I'll open the function box. So the first range is, I want to know if it's, I'm only interested in the tire, so this is my first range. And my first criteria is, it has to be a tire. My second range is the cost of it. And my criteria is, it has to be greater than, greater than 70 pounds. And that's okay. And I've only got two tires greater than 70 pounds, which is this and this. So you can also pick the name of what you want to count. So you go to count, instead of typing it in, the range, that's the range, equal to, no, no, not equal to, that's my range, comma, and is equal to this cell here. Let's see something wrong with that. So that's my range. And the value equals it should be it should be a test. I don't know why it's not working. Something is not right there. Oh, that's why it's not working. I'm just doing a count. It's count if. And this is equal to this. Enter. Okay. You can also do a count blank. So you want to count the number of blanks in a in a spreadsheet. Instead of using, if you use the normal count, it will not count blanks. So it will only count where there are characters. So we want to. This is like a a data of student performance in a in a test. So this is not this is not case sensitive. It's just I was typing counts instead of count if. So that's why the formula was not working. Okay. So if you want to count the number of blank spaces in this data, for instance, we use a 
function called the count blank. So what the count blank would do, it would count all the blank spaces. So it would be equal to count blank. I want to count all the blank spaces within here. And that's my range. And it will come back with two spaces. So I've only got two spaces blank here. If I want to count the number of exams taken by each pupil, if I want to count okay. there are two functions, count count A and count. When you do a count, count will only count the numeric functions. So if it will only count functions I can see. So if we do a count, it would only, when I do a count on Alan's exam taking, it does not recognize this field, so it's not counting it. However, Alan did math and failed it and did art as well. So in this case, I use a count A, which will count all the characters, all the cells on the spreadsheet. So sometimes it's usually better to use the count A than the ordinary counts. And to know the exams taken by each pupil, I'll just drag this down, and then it counts all the exams taken by each pupil, even though David failed both exams taken. We still have it as, as two. So that's the count A function. And if we want to know how many pupils start each exam, it will be counting the number of pupils that start each exam, which would be count A. Four people did math. I can drag that across to know how many people did the different exams. We have the sum if function, so we can have a sum if, and this is a conditional sum function. So for instance, I don't want to sum everything. I only want to sum items that cost more than, on this, I'm looking at this table now. I only want to sum items that cost more than 200 pounds, okay? So items costing more, more than 200 pounds. I use the sum if because of the, I have to put a condition. So I would start with equal to, it would be sum if, I can open a dialog box. Sum if you ask me for the range, this is what I want to sum. Comma. I can open the dialog box now. And my criteria is it has to be greater than two hundred pounds. Two hundred. And what is done is it's actually summed the ones greater than two hundred which is this and this, that's 550. That's the sum if function. You can do some, you can do in some ifs as well. That means you want two, two criteria or two or more criteria. So if you start with some ifs, so let's, Let's open the dialog box. So we want to sum, let's start with items costing more than 200 pounds. That's our first range. I want something over 200 pounds. And then, so. 
So criteria sum range is what? That's the sum range. The first criteria is that's the first criteria range is that I want tires. I want tires. And the criteria is I want tires. And the criteria range two is I want tires only costing above seventy pounds or maybe hundred pounds. I have the criteria range two, and my criteria is greater than seventy pounds. Okay. Is there any tire greater than? No, something wrong with this. The first one is. And the second one is, so the sum range is D3 to D11, criteria range here. The criteria is tire, criteria range 2. Oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm always missing S on the tire, thanks. <laughs> I was wondering why. You've entered too few arguments. What have I done wrong? Yeah, criteria range. First one is tire. That's range two. Okay, greater than seventy. Thank you. Thanks for pointing the S out. <laughs> yeah. So that worked. Let me see what other functions. Record. And of course we can so this is so this is sum if so we've got we've got sum if we can do an average which is mainly average and then we select a range which is the average of all this. Other function. Let's see other functions that go there. So there are so many other functions. The one thing I do do in uh, Excel, which is very useful, is to use the search button, and it actually helps to look up formulas. So for instance, I want some is and you go to get help on some is. So it's really useful to have all this this help and you can actually explain with instructions on how to do it. So you can get a lot of information from the help from the help button on Excel. If you are using an earlier version of Excel, the help button will be somewhere on the top right and corner or somewhere on the top bar. But you always find the help button. I think this is the latest version. We can also do some we can define names in uh, in Excel. Let's see. Names. Okay. So in Excel, you can actually define. You can you can you can name your cells, or you can name your rows, or you can name your your columns. And what this does, it helps with uh, when you're doing sometimes complex complex formulas to know instead of picking the cells, so you can just put the name of the row or the column, and then you can use that in your formula. And the way we define names in Excel. So if you go to formulas, there's this define name here. So you can click on a cell. So this cell A1, I want I want a name for it. I want a new name for it. So I want the instead of okay, let me. So this is my region. Instead of I can define name. So instead of region, I can make it test call zone one. Okay. 
He doesn't like spaces. So the one. And then if you click on this column, if you notice there, this is the name of my column. It's called test code on one. So you can actually use this in formulas. So what I'm going to do, you can, you can define names based on your first row, for instance. So if you want to define the name of this, of this spreadsheet based on the first row, I would select this. Go to define name. I'll go to create from selection. And what I want is, I want the top row to be the names of my of myself. So I'll click top row and I'll click OK. And this will be the name. And I can now use this name. So these are the names of myself. I can use them in formula. So for instance, if I want I want uh, let's use some age for instance. So we can use the name. So this is some age. So I want to sum the product by. So that's the product by is uh, greater than 50, for instance. So I'll, I'll make equal to sum is. And what, I, what my first range, let's open the box. So my first range, I know I want back. But instead of clicking on this, I've already defined my name. So I can go to my using formula and pick the product. And then it comes here. So it would automatically select where my products are once you pick the using formula. So that's my, so my sum range is the discount. My sum range is the discount. Criteria range. That's my, my first criteria is I want a bike. So it would be in the product. Then criteria one is I want the bike. I want I want the bike. Okay, so that's the product. My my range two is I want on the price. You know the price. Yeah, regular price. So I'll pick it from my, my formula. Regular price. And the range two. And my criteria is greater than greater than sixty pounds, which is okay. So is the product regular price. That's gonna that doesn't look correct. I'm just gonna filter this. Oh, I'm summing the discount. I shouldn't sum the discount. My sum range is the regular price. So I'll go to my formulas. My sum range is the price. So when you name a cell, it actually helps you when you are creating your formulas. And if you open a spreadsheet and you want to know the names, because if you click on if you click on this formula, for instance, if this is not a spreadsheet you created yourself, and you click on this this cell here, what you see instead of seeing the the normal cell references, you are going to see all these names on the formula. And for you to know what this name relates to, you have to go to the name manager to find out what the name, what cell those names relate to. Because sometimes you're at work and you know you're working with someone else's spreadsheet and it might be someone who likes to use names. And before you can get to the root of the formula, you have to go to the name manager to actually look at the different names to know what is happening, what, what name relates to what cell. And that is just 
define a names and you know using it in formulas. So you can actually make the formulas easier easier to create. Also today, we'll, let's look at let's do let's look at uh, let's have a quick look at uh, we did pivot last week, so let's let's do a quick pivot and VLOOKUPs. So I'm going to put this in a pivot table, and a pivot table is mainly a summary, as in just compressing your document. So to put it on a pivot table. I would insert pivot table, and I've already selected my range. I want it on this worksheet, and that's where I want it, and then OK. And what I want is, what I really want to see is, I want to see the product. I want to see the regular price. No, it's going to add the regular price up. I want to see the brand. Yeah, let's, let's ignore the regular price for instance. It's going to add it up. And so this will be the sum of the regular price for all the all the all these products. I'm gonna change the pivot setting to classic. I just prefer the classic. It spreads it off better. When you're using VLOOKUPs, VLOOKUPs. What the VLOOKUP does is it would look for a particular information in your data and return information based on what you told him. So for instance, if I, I want to I want the price of I want the total price of BMX. So I would say equal to V lookup and I'm going to use a function box for you. So if I use the V lookup you can just type it in straight. So what I want to look up is, I want to look up the BMX. That is what I want to look up. You can just click on it. And where I want to look it up, I want to look at it, on, look for it on this table, this my pivot. I want to look at it from here, and I want it to return what is on the second column. So I want it to return what's on the second column. And I want, I don't want it to return anything that looks like it. I want it to return BMX alone. So I will put false here, which means it will only return the value for BMX. I can drag that down. If I drag that down, then it will return, it will change the formula and return what is on column high. Okay. If you are adding this up, for instance, if you do an a sum for this, because you have because I have all these NAs, because it's looking at this blank, it would it will return NA. If I don't want it to return NA, what I need to add to my formula there's something called if error. So you can say if this formula, if it leads to an error, return zero or return blank. So if I if I add if error to this formula, so I'll put if error in front, put my real formula in bracket. I'll open the box so you can see. So what I'm saying is that if this is an error, give me zero. And I'll press OK, and then this becomes zero. And if I use this for my old formula, then I will not have any error. And my thumb will not be an error. So you might use this for you know large spreadsheets that, that you know that you will not find thumb, but you still want you know to find a thumb. I think we're gonna to have to stop. I think our time is spent. So next week I'm going to be looking at VLOOKUPs in uh, 
more of the helicopter, more of a pivot. We're going to do a bit of macro. We're going to do a bit of matching index next week. And that would be our last uh, session. Let me know if you want me to touch anything in particular, then I can go through it. How this session has been has been useful. And let me know if you need me to go over anything, and then I can do that. There's a lot to cover, though. I would, I would try my best. If you have any specific question, let me know. Then I can, I can go over it. Thank you. Thanks for logging in today, and have a good night. Bye.